Go to the Tools panel in Affinity Photo and select the Paintbrush tool. Then go to the View menu and Studio and select Layers, Brushes and Color. They're going to be the key ones here. And now just apply a brush stroke. Now I'm using at this point, very basic brush, 16. But I can set it to say 32 or something slightly bigger, 19, whatever. Just change it. And then apply this brush. Now avoid the edge. Avoid going over the edge or going even close to the edge. I think it's nicer. Now you can of course vary the size. You can just go over here and just, I'm just gonna, and you could of course use multiple layers and then build up a very complex design if you want to. But I'm just using a single layer with a stroke, a continuous stroke or separate strokes, but a fairly nice mix of doodles all over the screen. And I'm gonna go for red, pink, and apply again. But avoid going too close to the edge. And you can always resize. So you can always select the move tool and you can always resize it so you can just sort of put it about there. Now with that, what I can do, I can go to layers panel. I can go to effects just down the bottom and click there. Go for outer shadow. So I'm just gonna go for an outer shadow and set it to whatever you want. But I'm just gonna go so you can just see it. That's the key thing. As long as you can see it, just set it to 14, 14, 51. It really depends on the size of your document, etc. And also 3D, just go to that one and then set the radius. You can go for say seven or eight. You don't wanna push it too far because it just doesn't look as good, I think, personally. I think it, it works about eight or nine for this size of document. Now, once you've got that, what you can now do is you can convert this into a brush. But you need one extra step, which is go to a layer and rasterize. So go to layer, I know it looks like it's pixel layer, but layer, rasterize, and turn that off. And the reason I'm doing that, because I want to actually have this shadow and rasterize. Now you may find that you can save it to brushes without having to do this step, but I found that that's the best way of doing it. So now it's rasterized, everything, there's no effects here. So you can see no effects there. Now what you can do, go to the brushes panel, and with the brushes power, I'll just bring that over there. You can see now brushes. Now I'm gonna put it to this category. You can put it to any category, of course. And you can go down here, new brush from selection. So new brush from selection, and then you can see you've saved it. Now you can see what I've done earlier. And I'm just gonna create another document. So let's just, because I could always go back to it later. So let's just create that. Go here, and now what you can do, you can double click on that brushes. And you can see the variety of different controls. You can change the size. Personally, I like it a bit smaller, so about 500 or so. Now if I apply it, go again to the paintbrush tool and just apply it like that. And you can see the design there, which looks okay. However, there's a few other things I can do. Change the spacing if you want it a nice flowing design, but you can go for, say, dynamics and size jitter. So you can get a variety of different sizes. So if you apply it now with a, I'm using an art pad and pen, you can make it bigger and smaller, those sort of things. But also what you can do, you can add scattering to it as well. If you want to add some scattering, quite reasonable as well, just scatter it so it scatters off different directions. But also you can put rotation into it. So you can see now you've got this sort of rotation there. And also you can add hue jitter. So you can get the whole run of different colors, reds, greens, blues, etc. So that I think looks quite nice. You can again set the size, etc. how you want it. Now, once you've done that, I'm gonna move that brushes out of the way and now just apply it. And you can see the design there. And you can see what you can do very rapidly, very quickly, fill it with this sort of tangled. And that would take a bit of time just doing it manually, I think. So it's quite nice just to be able to quickly fill the design like that. And of course, once you've done that, you can always go and apply various filters, filters, distort, deform, etc. maybe other effects, and recolor it as well. So layer, new adjustment layer, and you maybe go, you know what, I want it in black and white. You can always go for black and white, and you can see the design there in black and white and tweak that and create a variety of different designs that way. Up to you. If you don't want that, of course, just deselect it. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.